we're doing. We do not have our alternate, and Mr. Symes is running a few minutes late, so we should be good. So if we can have an approval of the agenda. To approve the agenda for our June 21st meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now on to five approval of minutes. A would be Board of Finance special meeting May 11th. I'll make a motion to approve our uh, Board of Finance special meeting minutes from May 11th, 2023. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Then 5B, Board of Finance regular meeting, May 17, 2023. And I'll make a motion to Board of Finance regular meeting minutes from May 17th of 2023. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And we are on to public participation. Uh oh, admit. Do you mind if we can? Um, no, but if we click it, yeah. so we're going to have to click him on the one we do. That's fine. So, okay. All right. Any other public participation? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. All right. Just make sure your name and address for the recording secretary. Rick Laborious, 16 Church Street. I'm here tonight in my capacity as a member of the Diversity Council of East Windsor. Uh, the uh, Town of East Windsor established the Diversity Council to foster a climate of inclusion for people of all races, religions, gender identity or expression, ages, sexual orientation. I was not here for the Diversity Council's presentation to the Board of Finance. I was, however, here on the evening you made your final cuts to this year's budget. And I have to tell you, I was very disappointed that there's no funding included in the budget for any programming for the coming fiscal year. The uh, Diversity Council had proposed uh, an appropriation that would fund a project called the Witness Stone Project. The Witness Stone Project is a is a uh, educational program that uh, identifies and works with uh, school systems and communities to identify the places and the people where enslavers and enslaved people live in our community. And it comes to a great surprise to many people to realize that there were enslaved people in East Windsor, Connecticut. The 1790 census shows six families where enslaved people lived. This project was established by an educator who started it in Guilford, Connecticut in 2017. Since then, it's grown to encompass uh, towns and cities across the state, including uh, near us, Suffield, Connecticut, that has a very active program. Um, it may have not, it may not have been clear uh, that there was support for this by the school administration. Dr. Tudrin and Daryl both met with the founder of the Witness Stone Project and were excited about it, including it in their curriculum, assuming they could provide that the funding would be provided. And after I heard your discussion on the night you made your final cuts in the budget, I uh, called Daryl and asked him, because I had not been part of the conversations where they met with the, uh, the gentleman there, the exec executive director of the Witness Stone Project. And I asked him uh, what their commitment was to it. And I asked him, and, and he said they would very much like to do it, that it fits within their curriculum. And uh, 
they thought it was an exciting project. I asked him to send me a letter to that effect, which he did. And the only concern was the funding. Now, the uh, presentation that, that you received may not have been as thorough as it could have been. And it may not have included all the details, uh, but our, our former chair, Anna Rivera Hill, had negotiated with the Witness Stone people and they were going to accept a $3,000 payment as a full payment for the project for the first year. Um, I don't know if that was communicated to you. It's, it's difficult to understand when we as a community have a commitment to ensuring that diversity and equity are part of our community that you eliminated all funding for any programming for the coming year. And I know it's late in the uh, budget, uh, late in this year, but I would ask uh, that early in the, the beginning of the next fiscal year that you find some way to appropriate the funds to run this very, very important, critical and there's another one other thing. The five thousand dollars funds. It, it's five thousand dollars for the full program. That funds the uh, the school system. It funds the uh, training of the teacher, materials, some research assistance, a, a number of program uh, the actual program elements of it. The other part of it is that the Diversity Council wanted to involve other community organizations and other community members in this uh, year-long project. Once the school system does its work, uh, I, the Historical Society is interested in this, in this project as well. Um, Generally, there's a there's a celebration and a capstone at the end of the the uh, the school curriculum, hey, Daddy. and at that celebration, it is a community celebration and a community recognition of where the enslaved peoples lived in the town of East Windsor, uh, and often the marker, the witness marker from the program is, a, is a, an offshoot of a German program that identifies sites where Holocaust victims had lived prior to the Holocaust. And they commemorate it by placing a stone or a monument at the site. The Witness Stone Project takes that same concept and identifies a place either, either where the enslaved people were, were held or somewhere that's community, somewhere in the community to recognize that those, that the people were here and that they contributed to the development of the community. So with that, I simply will ask that early in the next fiscal year, as early as possible, that you consider appropriating the $3,000 is, is nice, the program really costs five thousand, and I'd request that you fund the full five thousand. There were some elements that would have been left out at the three thousand dollar funding level, hey. uh, so I'd request that you consider that. Hey. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else? Good job. Brenda Crockett, Tom Rockville, Road and Broadfield. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the BMX Skateboard Park. It's our understanding that there was a motion made to allocate some funds um, to put towards the growth of the park. Um, 
which as you may or may not know, has been in the works since 2009. Um, by the time this park is done, which this is a, well, that's more of a 3D layout. This isn't, I can explain this to you. Um, it'll be over $200,000 and <clears throat> all of which we've raised dollar by dollar through fundraising and donations. To, um, currently we have, um, we're just shy of enough funds to place a $30,000 equipment order, which would cover this whole set. This is, um, this intersection is what we have now. This and this, this whole section here is $30,000 with shipping, handling, and installation. And then additionally, um, once that order's placed, it was all planned to be a module park so we can keep adding on to it. This whole section here, which is huge, and probably make it like on the map as one of the best skateboard BMX parks in the area, is going to be another 50000 with shipping, handling, and installation. So this is our committee, some of it. Lori yeah. Gabriel, Laura Harney, my husband Dave, myself. Um, 13 years, just to say that one more time. Our children are growing. And additionally, they've already grown. They're, they're gone. <laughs> additionally, we have um, 84 signatures here in support from students at the high school that I'd like to submit to you if you want to take a look at that, um, who are in favor of the completion of the park. A lot of whom have worked with us over the years on different fundraisers for the park. Um, and we wanted to just say who we are, what we've done, um, what, how much we have to go, and just a plea that if there's funds that could be provided to this park, it's our understanding at your last regular meeting, there was a motion made to allocate some funds to the park, so we're speaking in favor of that and in support of that, and we hope that you will too. Just to be clear, we're a group of moms and volunteers in the town. We all live here and have blood, sweat, and tears in this in this park. And um, this is us volunteering, raising these funds. Okay, so it's not, we're not a town. We are a town committee, actually appointed way back, right? Okay. Yep, by the Board of Selectmen. Yep. We worked at the time. We worked but, with inlands and wetlands. Thank you for kind of like getting me going again. Um, with inlands and wetlands, planning and zoning, um, to identify a uh, a, a safe place for a park of this nature, something that is visible um, because we want it to be seen. We want the people here who are using this park, we don't want it stuffed away in the corner of the woods somewhere. We wanted it to be visible in a recreational area. Um, so back in 2009, we were, um, after meeting a list of charges this long, we were approved as fundraising committee. Um, and that's when it all started. That's when we started our our spaghetti suppers and our rubber jump races and our um <laughs> we just did a golf tournament more yes our first golf tournament which was awesome um many many so as i said currently we have um we're just shy after this rubber duck race we're estimating we're about five thousand shy of the next order we want to place so that we can have a nice big open house celebration in the fall and draw children into these sports. Um, to keep them off the streets, out of town hall steps, off the dangerous spots where they might skateboard off the streets. It so just offers, a, a, it, right, and it offers a whole nother sporting option. Um, not everybody likes traditional sports, basketball, baseball, a lot of people do. Um, but for those who don't, this is another option. So we have um, several companies that are in support of this. We have a huge supporter in East Long Meadow, Mass. That track sporting um, store. They are huge in the Northeast for the for these type of sports as well as snowboarding, skiing, et cetera. Um, they have been our supporters since we started this. They are um, willing to partner with us and volunteer their time and their merchandise and everything and just have it like a grand open house with refurbished bikes and skateboards, bring children who might not be able to afford them to the park um, and just drum up excitement for these sports within our community. And um, so once this order is placed and installed, the last order will be approximately $50,000 with equipment, 
uh, shipping, handling, and installation, and then we're done. Don't get too excited. And it wasn't, and it wasn't that expensive, but inflation has hit, as you know. Right. And we are just volunteers. That means we are not a line item anywhere or anything from the town, including even signage. They did the beautiful signage around the whole town, except for us. So I'm just letting you know it's all money that we earn ourselves. Or so that services or materials that have been donated by local businesses. Um Kirby Holden Construction at the time gave us an incredible deal on the excavation of the land. We got another incredible deal for deal from Arialdi after doing RFPs for construction work. Um, all the who did all the asphalt. asphalt? So we've worked really hard, and it's been an incredible journey. But we um, we love some financial support. Very much so. We might have the Manchester two hundred thousand. Park, yes, Laura's our media person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Channel 3 will help us as well. As well. But we've, also, <laughs> we've also had a lot of collaborative conversations with other park and recs in surrounding towns. That was one of them. Yes. We'll say it louder. I'll say it again so they can hear you. I don't know if they heard her. It, it, she was just saying that Manchester, they heard, sorry. Um, and then we also park and rec director in South Windsor who... Um, they built, it was over a $200,000 concrete park that is highly used. Um, and field 75,000. So we are, uh, we're hopeful to get some support financially. Hopefully move this thing along a little bit faster. Yes, because we're not the state borders. And we're getting We need that help for the kids. <laughs> and that's that's everything. If, you, if there's you. any information you need or any, you know, priceless set, you know, that you'd want to see or whatever. We have everything you could possibly want. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. So we are going to move on to seven communications. I have nothing. I have nothing. All right. So we're on to monthly reports. Did I skip to the back side where I did the end of the year announcement? <laughs> sure. So revenues are very good. We have more than made up all our budget appropriation plus our lower additional appropriations to the tune of $845,000. For rent and third, we had revenue. So uh, our, yeah, $843,000 is what we are through May. Obviously, with the bulk of that being the $2.1 million that building permits is over with the large permit that came in from gravel pit solar. Other places that have surpluses are my interest income for $400,000. Um, there you also see it under mine that $2,060,000 that we spent, $750,000 was allocated during the budget. The rest was all additional appropriations. Yeah. Um, 101 for conveyance is over. I think that's the bulk of everybody. Tax is about breaking even, but you'll see in the state revenue that we got um, $236,000 for the motor vehicle cap. It comes in under state revenue, but it's really an offset to the tax because that's money she can't collect in current taxes. It comes in as a state revenue instead. So that's the revenue for expenditure. Um, I don't have anywhere that I needed to transfer this month. It's funny. <laughs> um, including uh, social services. Yeah, that's a miracle. Yeah. That's um, the first month this year, right? Uh, no, I tried to group them in every few months. It was bad enough coding every few months. <laughs> I think we did two months in a row there, though. So currently we have spent 95% uh, of our budget, but as you see in our end of the year, I'm expecting to spend 99% of our budget with approximate return of $578,000. This does not include the transfer I'm asking for later. I did not take that into account because you guys hadn't approved it yet. And then I also included for your benefit a fund balance analysis. But I did get verification from my order that I don't really need to do anything until we get to the end of the year next year with that being over. 
our cap. We don't need to fix it until June of 24. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions on the sound financials? Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else? Any questions? All right. And the pump balance analysis does have all the list of what made up that two million and sixty thousand yep. dollars. All spelled out on the, yeah. on the analysis yep. on the back side of my financials. <clears throat> all right. Any other questions for Amy? All right. So then we would go on to. Well, she answered me, so we'll go on to see. Right now, we don't have anybody here, so I'm over financial. <laughs> You're on the subcommittee, so that's what I was kind of looking at. You. <laughs> the, um, there's a report that was sent for the end of the It's year. the same. Hey, we haven't had any meetings. Yeah, we haven't. Had any. Right. Just because of the schedule with the graduation. Gotcha. What what is that going to do for us in terms of our July meeting? Is there any, what do you mean? We're going now a month without preparing anything. Not really any different. I mean, yeah. it, the end of the year is going to be what the end of the year is. Yeah, and we actually don't that. actually finish until really September because it's um, 60 days out. So really, July and August are both pushed back. The anything that related to prior to June 30 gets pushed back. Just both revenue and expenses. Yes, from last year. Um, we can ask Brian to email you guys a report. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting nervous. I think what he kind of said was the same as last time. Yeah. That is. And I think that that's kind of. I mean, that's kind of where we are too with it. And I think it's just year end was. Just, Which is, I guess, it would just be nice to get a little more clarity. I can, between Lauren and I, we can communicate that. All right, so then we're on to D, F, I, 22, 23, transfer. <clears throat> well, I did send you all the support after the fact. <laughs> And I will tell you the numbers don't add up to the 90 for the equipment piece. They came in higher. They actually came in at 102, 617, 31. You add all the pieces together. I don't know if you want to do the even hundred thousand or if you want to make it 112, 617, 31 around it, or and that would give Matt what all the requests that he asked for. The server ended up being much higher. And that was tied to their um security and their door locking and stuff. Needing to replace the server. Yep. Questions? That is not here. Well, I mean, I can do our best yep. answer though. We can pretty much answer whatever you need. We've been through them a lot. So the one single sheet was just the dress coats, and they didn't want to do so. That's the ten thousand tied to uniforms, and they didn't want to do all of it because some of the guys already have the pants, and some of the guys already have the shoes. So they figured they would do the whole part of it for everybody. And then the rest of the people could use their uniform allowances themselves that they get in their contract for the balance of their class A uniforms. And then the other pieces are that um, you know they got new um, guns last year, but they didn't get the red dots or the holsters for them. So that's the rest of that, finish those. Uh, the rifles they currently have are fully automatic, so they are looking to get something that is not fully automatic. They're also from the Vietnam era. And the, there is the top of between semi-automatic and automatic is just one subtle click. So if you're on, if you're in, in a real bad situation, you could inadvertently switch that from semi to auto without ever knowing it, and then you're in a, a whole different circumstance. The red dots are the same thing that were on the um, handguns that were issued to the Bristol police officers that and that the one who yeah. was able to, one second like one who was able to drop the assailant was able to do so because even though he was already shot himself, he had a red dot on his um, on his handgun that allowed him to take out the assailant. So 
So you're asking for a hundred here if you say you need one twelve to make it yep. correct. To do all of it, it needs to be one twelve. Hold on a minute. Uh, one twelve six seventeen thirty one. Oh, you can just cross off the map if we change it. All right, so if somebody wants to make a motion, I guess we can discuss about that. Oh, okay. So, it's good. so all the 112 would come from police officer salary and move to the other items. Yep. So you're still going to 112 out of that money. Yep. Okay. I'll move uh, transfer request number 43 for 112,617 dollars and 31 cents from police officer salary to police officer equipment and police officer uniforms. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Just for clarification, Amy, do you need a breakdown as to how much is going into each line, whether it's equipment or uniforms? No, I just adjusted it in the equipment because the uniform is saying the 10,000. So the 100, well, okay, it's so the 112,000 and change or whatever. Now it's coming from police officers. Police officer salaries, which I know are because of vacancy. Yep. But Quickly tell me where their overtime line is, because have they not had they're, a ton of overtime to cover uh, the little, salaries? A little bit, but not a ton. There's still a uh, 200 plus that are good with the, all the vacancies they've had. Um, in the end of the year analysis on page 8A21. Three. Oh mm, 24. Um, their patrol line is two hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars to the good, and my estimate—that's my estimate through the end of the year—and their overtime is estimated to be eighty five thousand dollars short. So there's still more than two hundred thousand to the good in officer salary, even offsetting the overtime, and that's estimated through the end of the year. Okay. They have currently three vacancies that are not filled. And it takes a long time. One of them they filled from our June retirement, it didn't get filled until December. Right. So they went six months without that position and didn't fill at all. And now that person's in school. So it takes a long time when something becomes vacant. Oh, sure. All right, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. You gotta let Tom talk. Oh. Aye. <laughs> all those opposed? <laughs> Motion clearly passes. All right. Thank you, Tom. It was Bill in the phone. All right. Reconciliation. We are good through May, and Interfund is balanced through May with the Board of Ed. Right, so Board of Select number nine, Board of Selectmen updates and referrals. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, the dreaded restart. Uh, Amy, can you look for me on so I can share? Uh, go to up here. Multiple participants can share. That's it. Okay, so I'm here tonight to present the, the final appropriation recommendations from the Board of Selectmen for the Town's American uh, Rescue Plan Act allotment. Um, so just to, why well, this, what's happening here? I share the wrong screen. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, so just to kind of set the table a little bit, the town received about $3.5 million in the American Rescue Plan Act, which passed in 2021. 
we used about one, I'm, I'm rounding numbers here. These are not going to be to the penny. It's just for conversation's sake. But um, we used about 1.1, almost $1.2 million for the Erase Grant Program, the Small Business and Nonprofit Assistance Program that we did in 2021. Um, we then also did supplemental, well, we did 924000 to offset the local cost for the community center. Um, we did an appropriation back in May, you'll recall, for emergency generators, uh, engineering studies for the track replacement at the high school, um, the replacement of a senior center bus, and I think one more that I'm forgetting at the moment. Um, and so when the debt ceiling discussion was kind of hitting the fan down in Washington, there was a lot of rumblings that were coming out of uh, CCM and the National League of Cities and the, the GFOA organization um, that the federal government, as part of the debt ceiling agreement, might claw back any of those uncommitted ARPA funds. Um, that would be tragic. Um, if, if you know, we hadn't gone through the appropriation process and they ended up clawing that money back before we could put it to use here. Um, that did not come to pass in, in the final deal, but the House, uh, particularly the House Majority Caucus, is already making rumblings about trying to do the same thing as part of the budget uh, process in September. So these funds are clearly in jeopardy. Um, so the Board of Selectmen used the community-wide survey that we did uh, about a year ago um, as, as a means of formulating our final recommendations, which are what we're going to talk about tonight. Okay, we'll do this the hard way. There we go. Um, Amy, can you move the little screen thing? So first off, uh, we are in need of replacing our uh, high-speed uh, dump sweeper, the sand sweeper that we use to clean the roads. Um, this is a multi-hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment. It's 30 years old. Um, it's something that the town will have to replace. And it ties in with one of the stated goals that came out of the community survey of doing street improvements. Um, so last year, we, as you can see from the slide, we were only able to clean about 70% of the roads, local roads in East Windsor, um, before actually the salt needed to, the sand and salt needed to be reapplied again. That was because the machine is um, unreliable, continues to break. It, because of its age, parts are more difficult to um, both get and, and outfit. So this seems like a good opportunity to take care of something that we're going to need to do without burdening taxpayers, to, uh, local taxpayers to do it. Um, this next proposal, um, $20,800 would provide for eight uh, infrared cameras for each fire department. Um, this, I had the opportunity to do an active drill with the Warehouse Point Fire Department at the beginning of, I want to say it was the beginning of June, um, and they put me into a basement in some, some old dormitory building on Plantation Road and filled it with smoke, and you could not see Ruth from as far away as I was. Um, it was a very much an eye-opener as to the hazard that these folks put themselves in when they go into a structure fire, and in the last few years, we have had more than our share of structure fires. Um, so these are life-saving tools that we can use to support the fire departments in doing what they do and make sure that we don't have a tragedy here. $20,800 gets 16 of these infrared cameras. That's, that would be eight for each department. You heard the presentation from the BMX Skate Park. The Board of Selectmen's recommendation is to take $10,000 of our appropriation and commit it towards the work that they're doing. Um, as they talked about, they have been working on this on a strictly volunteer basis for the last 13 or 14 years. Um, this would be the town's, I believe, the town's first uh, government-funded contribution towards um, towards their objective, and this was unanimously supported by the board. And then the last thing um, we would take the the and the reason that number is weird, sixteen nine seventy six, um, that is the balance of what's left after all of the appropriations that that have been already approved or have been recommended to you guys. We would take that and park that in the town sidewalk fund. Um, you'll, you're probably familiar with the notion that we are doing the connectivity projects uh, here around Windsorville Reservoir, I think uh, Perry, Down Depot, and Up Main. There's going to be because that project has lingered for as long as it has. Um, that's not going to be 100% state funded. There is a local match that we will need to contribute in order to complete that. Um, the remaining 16, almost 17 thousand dollars in funds goes towards um, uh, meeting in part the town's obligation for that. It won't cover it, but it'll it'll get us moving. So the one you didn't talk about is the 112 yeah. along with trails equipment and materials. That was because we were, it, that was already done at a different meeting. Thank you. So um, we also, and 
I think by and large, the most popular response in the community survey was the need for additional walking trails. Walking trails and bike paths were the two. And um, what we're asking for is $112,000, which would go towards the, op uh, the acquisition of what's called the tool cat, um, which is a, a basically it's a utility vehicle that can outfit different attachments for different purposes from uh, a plowing blade to a, a, a grabber to a snowblower. Um, it would be ideal for trail development and maintenance. Um, and it cuts a, a swath, I think about five feet wide. Um, and then there's also, as part of that $112,000, I think 30,000 of, of that is for materials that um, would be used to do upgrades and, and additional uh, expansion at the Scantic River State Park. And that would, uh, Amy and I were joking about, well, I was joking about this the other day, but um, that that would commit every nickel that the federal government had given us in the American Rescue Plan Act. And Amy pointed out that that still leaves us with about 50 cents left over. Um, all of these projects are unanimously supported through the, the Board of Selectmen. This is, these are not all of the projects that were put forward, but as you folks know, we like to work in it from a position of consensus and we are in consensus on all of these projects. So I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Otherwise, I would ask your support in advancing these to a town meeting. Any questions? So if somebody wants to make a motion to allocate the five hundred ninety four dollars American Rescue Plan Act and to send it to them as listed before you do that. Uh, how will we approve $509,394 for the American Rescue Plan Act funds to the projects of the walking trails, equipment and materials at $112,000? Uh, high dump street sweeper at $349,618. Infrared cameras for the fire departments, 16 of them for $20,800. BMX skate park, uh, skate park improvements, $10,000. And sidewalk improvements for $16,976. And forward that to a town meeting. Okay, second. Second. All right. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? You're so cute. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, number 10 Board of Education updates and referrals. You have it in your package. 11 new business. I have none. I have none. Unfinished business. I have none. Um, number 13, board member Evans. Welcome to the summer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Anything? No. Nicole? I'll just say that um, it was nice this year. I know there's not, um, that Patrick's not here, but it was nice to have, um, he had the ability to do ceremonies and stuff again in the building. So um, I know all of the grades had the award ceremonies where parents were able to attend. They did the eighth grade graduation. Um, so it was just nice, you know, kind of getting back. I think this was like the first year where it fell back to our pre-COVID normal. So definitely nice. Anybody else? All right. So a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Bye. 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 Motion passes. Bye, Tom. Have fun on the rest of your vacation. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Right.